welcome to Berwick Mitsubishi. My name is Mark Hoffman and I have the pleasure today of taking you around our Toyota Prado Kakadu. Now if you're looking at this car, you're interested in the fact that it is as close to a Lexus as a Prado can ever get. It's got so many of the parts shared with the Lexus brand, it's got every feature you could want in a Prado. So we'll start at the front with condition, condition, and then we'll get into some of the features as well. Up the front presents brilliantly. We have one, two, three, four, five tiny touch-ups just across the bonnet have been touched up with the correct paint. Headlights present brilliantly. At the start of the video, you probably saw them on. They are HID headlights. They also have cornering control. When you turn the steering wheel, the headlight will swivel left or right depending on when you're turning. A brilliant feature in the local town around the streets, but even better in the backcountry roads because it turns around the corner before you do. Do have the washer jets there to keep them squeaky clean. Well notice nice. we do have front parking sensors on this vehicle as well, which brings me to the front camera. We'll show you how that works when we're inside the vehicle as well. Fog lights, of course. How would I forget missing, mentioning that? Up to the front, now on the side, front driver's side, you'll see no signs of shopping, trolley dents, nick scratches, anything like that on this vehicle. Presents really, 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 really well. Do have the 18 inch Kakadu alloy wheels. Now, the previous owner is elected to put on a very good set of tyres, actually. We've got General Grabber Highway Terrain tyres with a heap of tread on them. Really good grip tyres and really good brand as well. All the way around, of course. Coming up to the side now, colour-coded mirror with LED indicator. You will notice underneath one of the cameras for the vehicle as well. One or matching on the other side. Coming along the side now, do have the side plate here. Um, has a tiny, tiny little scuff just there, but no sorts of off-road damage on this vehicle. Car is fitted with proximity key being top of the range. You'd expect that. I have the key in my pocket right now, and the car is open. I say want to walk away, go into the shops, just do that. It's locked. Walk away, come back with a whole heap of bags from, say, Bunnings or, say, Uncle Dan's. You've got a slab. You can quickly just come up, open the car. How easy is that? That will change your life. Coming down the back of the vehicle now, yet again, brilliant condition alloy wheel, no signs of scuff scratches, brilliant condition general grab a tire on the rear of this vehicle. We'll notice on the back though, it's probably hard to see with the camera, we'll talk about it more on the inside. The car is fitted with the KDSS system at the back, we'll talk about how that dramatically changes the ride of the car. Up to the back of the Kakadu now, a fair bit to talk about here, first of which is the badge, just to let every other Prado owner know that you went top of the pops. On the back, we've got the high mount stoplight on the rear spoiler. There is a wiper hidden up there as well. Down here, we've got the cover for the tire. Does have a reversing camera here as well, and a really good reversing camera. Remember, I mentioned that part sharing with Alexis? It's got the turning camera. You turn the steering wheel, it's got a pair of lines telling you exactly where you are going. Very, very easy to park this vehicle. Down the bottom, of course, we've got reversing sensors, as well as a two and a half ton rated genuine Toyota tow bar as well. On the back of the tailgate here, as I mentioned, we have proximity keys, a pair of buttons here, nice and easy to use, just hit unlock, unlocks the car, open the tailgate and uh, open it right up actually, as the car goes past. Frighten! Anyway, in the back here, we'll start at the door, you have a little twist lock here to lock it so in a windy day it doesn't shut on you. Over on this side we've got a little spot for, um, well, I, my cameraman and I are very familiar with these cars, um, maybe an umbrella, a little uh, fire extinguisher, that sort of thing on that side. Um, quite useful. On this side, you've got tools for the vehicle as well. Let's pop it open. There we go. So you've got your uh, tyre wrench and you've got your um, extensions for the bottle jack as well. Pop them closed again. And a little door handle, just if you get stuck in the back of your own car, you can escape. Into the centre now. Now you will notice at the back we've got cargo tight end points are adjustable. We've got a 120 20 watt AC inverter there, so you can run a small laptop, the iPad, that sort of thing off the inverter. Now, one of the things to note with this car, don't have to reach in and uh, grab handles and do that old hat game to bring up the third row seats. It's all electric in this one. One thing to note, really good amount of cargo space when they're down, so nice flat doesn't interrupt. But when they're up, still a good amount of space, but heaps and heaps of room. Have a look over there. Leather seats in the back, I'd hazard a guess they've barely had any use in their life, but really good leg room for the people in the back as well. Cup holders, of course, and look up at the roof, one of the rare seven seats with rear third row air conditioning, and you get a pretty good view of the um, DVD unit there as well for the kids back here. We'll um, continue along our little journey in the back, I reckon, around the side of the vehicle. 
Coming to the passenger side of the Kakadu, now this is generally where you'd see damage to that horrible thing we call a gutter. None of that here, resents really, really well. No signs of damage around the fuel filler cap, we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, down here, yet again, brilliant condition alloy wheel, unmarked uh, tyre here. Probably a tiny, tiny little scuff on the paint if I'm being brutal on that wheel there. Coming down the side of the vehicle, we've had a small touch-up done just here on a sort of an L-shaped scratch just there. Barely noticeable, but I do like to point it out on these videos. Side step there, unmarked. One thing to note with the side step, makes getting up onto the roof really easy actually. If you were to put crossbars up here, very easy to load and unload the roof. This is a trick I learned from this, and Lynn, my camera, probably knows this one. Cleaning the roof, open the tailgate and you can stand up there and clean it. Really, really easy. Sunroof, of course, as well in the Kakadu. Coming down the last of the wheels now, you'll notice brilliant condition alloy wheel, the tiniest of little scuffs on that one, and uh, a great condition general grab a tyre. So the whole way around the exterior of this vehicle presents very, very well. Around to the front of the Kakadu now, let's have a little bit of a look in the engine bay. First thing to notice with the Toyotas is just build quality. We all know it, and it's true here. You've got sound deadening on the bonnet, sound deadening all around the engine, and a really good engine to boot. Heaps of room in here if you want to fit it out for touring with extra batteries, air compressors, that sort of stuff. Really, really heaps of room back here. But let's talk about the engine. Four-cylinder, three-litre engine, diesel, of course, 127 kilowatts of power, 410 newton meters of towing torque as well. Five-speed automatic, four by four, of course. Out of this big Kakadu, you are going to get an amazing 8.5 litres to the 100 kilometres. And out of a 150-litre long-range tank, I hope you're sitting down for this one, 1,765 kilometres of average driving range. All right, we're inside the Kakadu now, and um, I'm actually driving this car at the moment, and a, a very familiar car, as I've mentioned a couple of times through the video, to the cameraman and myself, actually, and such a nice, nice place to be, these cars. We'll start off at the start. Obviously, the car is currently off. I've got the key in my pocket. All I do is foot on the brake, hold the start button. Steering wheel comes to me, lowers down, comes back to me, right into my driving position, how I'm comfortable. Might, might want to turn my music down didn't know that there we go off we go so really comfortable place to be sets up perfectly for you steering wheel is electrically adjustable both up and down in and out um, you do have memory positions on them of course as well we'll start at the start steering wheel here obviously we've got wood grain at the top and bottom we've got the silver trims here some very slight wear on the bottom here not sure how you'd get wear down there to be honest it'd be a bit awkward to drive like that but a tiny tiny little bit of wear there but no signs of wear at the top or sides on the uh, center console here we've got on the center of the steering wheel we've got our <coughs> excuse me Bluetooth phone controls here as well as our little menu item here so you can um, select all of your center screens here so you've got your multi-terrain select you turn your parking sensors on and off AFS is the cornering headlights leave it on why would you turn it off and second gear start of course we can play with that in all buttons anyway and uh, obviously you can play in here this one's interesting if you're off-road you've got your different modes there mud sand loose rock mogul and rock so when you set it into your all terrain modes down here, you can tell exactly what sort of terrain you're on depending on where you are. Seeing as we're in Victoria, which is mostly high country, I'd probably select loose rock would be your normal thing. And then it tells you how to engage it. So obviously it controls the height, the shift patterns, and the traction controls just didn't work the best. And it'll tell you to shift into neutral and it will uh, try and go into low range and all that sort of stuff as well. So I'll just turn that off for a moment. There we go. Um, and here we've got our cruise control, on, off, up, down. Hasn't changed in 25 years because it works. Left side, we've got our wipers. They are automatic at the front. You can just set how severe you want them. And they're also speed sensitive. So traveling down the freeway, they will go faster. And when you pull up to a traffic light, they'll slow down again. A nice feature to have. Rear wiper, of course. Over here on this side, we've got head, uh, HID headlights for the low beams, as I mentioned before with the cornering. Some of the best headlights out there, which are really good. Um, you've got, leave them on all the time. When you turn the car off, open the door, they will turn off automatically. Or if you don't like driving with your headlights on all the time, you can turn it to automatic. They will turn on at night time, but do remember in the rain to turn your headlights on anyway. I just leave them on. Fog light there, of course, if you are driving through the fog or the snow. Um, over this side we've got a dash brightness control and of course down here we've got electric mirrors, big mirrors on the Prado, fold them in if you're in the city car parks or in a tight spot. 
they fold in nice and close to the car. Engine start button there, of course. Down here, we've got the uh, interior illumination. We've got a button there to clean the headlights, so if you're driving off-road or something like that, get mud on them or you're up in the snow, it can be useful to clear them back off again. Idle up, that'll just uh, it raise the engine revs about 15, sorry, about 500 RPM does that in the morning just to warm the car up or if you're up the snow or something like that down in the city probably not needed so much memory seat position there door locks if you're driving through a bad suburb four door power windows all automatic both down and up as well um, and really good condition doors nice soft trims throughout grab handle here for the height challenged among us makes getting in and out of this car so much easier for your back and everything as well one of the many airbags seven airbags in this car dual front dual side dual side curtain driver's knee as well coming down we might as well mention it here why not Lynn? change it up two of the speakers in this car this car has many it's got two there one there two over there some in the back some in the door some in the very back the audio quality in this car really 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 good we'll go up and into the mirror electric chromatic mirror gone to the days of the flick switch someone with bright headlights is behind you dims down automatically they go away brightens back up nice and easy a little spot here for your uh if you're feeling like being a bus driver you can actually see my cameraman can you see him in that if you can that's lynn by the way anyway we'll fold him back up we got our door button there for the lights we got a sunroof big suv lots of light brought in by the sunroof you can obviously fold it back as well and you can stop that or you can go tilt so you can have the best of both worlds there as well coming down through the center now notice i've got it set to navigation at the moment we've got a lot of buttons around here you can set up the car audio navigation as well notice it's got lots of little red dots that's the um sort of the car's breadcrumb it'll track your driving and it'll actually tell you where you've been so if you drive up in say the high country or somewhere you don't know you can follow your red dots back to where you were quite useful that um, and also when you drive home collects lots of little red dots to show you exactly where you drive every day um, of course you can go into audio gives you your am fm and cd of course whatever station you want to listen to as well down from there we've got our climate control dual zone of course so we've got the front passenger front driver you've also got uh, rear demister but you'll notice a little button there heated mirrors so in the morning when you click the rear demister on the two front side mirrors also get demisted as well making the morning drive a lot nicer obviously fan control and rear climate control you can turn it you can control it from here or you can turn it off the people at the back can have their own one we'll show you in a moment down from there we've got a multi-disc play unit here as well as am fm control you can control most of it from up the top so you've got another one down here as well um, going i'll move the shifter out of the way going down here we've got our four drive modes now a little bit to talk about here when you're off-road in this vehicle you have so much more capability than most cars you've got a you've got your four high great for dirt roads even snow you'll be right there um, four low you're getting on rocks and you're in ruts and you're going off the beaten trail a little bit you've got your downhill descent control which is like off-road cruise control use it in four low and it'll sort of control the throttle for you and brakes for you it's really quite useful if you're um, not quite used to off-roading as much and even those who are used to it can find it quite easy it's, as I said cruise control it's easy um, you've got a center diff lock all Prados come with that so that'll lock the power from front and rear and give you as much four-wheel drive as possible this one however has a rear diff lock if you're off-roading an essential item to have almost two big cup holders there as well automatic shifter as I mentioned five-speed automatic leather wrapped with a wood grain top some very slight wear on top of the shifter there pop that up here got D and sports mode if you're towing sports mode can be useful to say hold fourth gear up a hill I'll switch it back into reverse and have a look in the big screen here you'll see we've got a really good reversing camera and as I mentioned before one of the best cameras out there you turn the steering wheel have a look I can point this car exactly where I want it to go really really useful there as well you can change the mode to that one I don't use that so much then of course you've just got the straight line why would you when you've got the best camera available then you've also got this one which is quite fun yes we agree we're not going to crash you can find actually your side by side parking it tells you exactly sort of you can play around with it and tell you exactly whether you want the box to be and you can move that around and this one here as well back to the normal camera another one i like and actually most people that come with me in one of these cars when i'm at home is this button when you're parallel parking you push that button there have a look over here you can now see exactly where the side of the car is so that's from the passenger side mirror 
see the sideboard if I turn the, the wheel you can see where the wheel is there as well showing you exactly how close you are you also get the front camera here it's a little bit fish-eyed but still gives you a really good idea I mean we can quickly just roll forward now and you'll see looking at that camera I'm not even looking forward just looking at that camera I know if I go a little bit further I am bang on that line so really easy to park this car really really well and of course we can play around with it and go backwards as well switch it to the side camera and you can see with that side camera exactly where the car is going to be and park perfect parallel parking every time anyway enough about reversing cameras down here another essential option in four wheel drive a luxury one that is heated front seats i've got mine on max because i love it it's like a heat pack in your lower back great option usb and auxiliary input for the audio system 12 volt socket here little bin great for your wallet or your phone leather wrap handbrake of course in here we've got our glove box which as you notice you've seen that cool box which is a brilliant feature not just a little air conditioning vent like most others this will keep your cans cold 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 brilliant for those longer road trips going to go around the interior now and we'll notice leather trim throughout black leather on this car presents brilliantly doesn't have floor mats this vehicle but carpets are in great great condition you notice wood grain trims throughout satin silver trims as well and soft touch plastics where there are plastics so a nice interior so cuts down on the echoes a lot of sound deadening as well in the back we've got our rear air conditioning here so the rear seat passengers can control their own destiny you can also turn it off at the front if you don't want little timmy playing with it in the back now you'll notice the seats are adjustable so you can set leg room optimally for the front and rear seat passengers the, sorry second and third row you do have two isofix mounting points in the rear row as well as well as if i can reach it from here hey i can you've got a nice armrest with cup holders for the rear seat passengers as well um, something i always mention is the roof lining really good condition on this vehicle three vents for all three rows of course we do have the roof mount dvd player as well so we'll jump into the books because this video is sort of going a little long but it's sort of hard not to with the kakadu it's got so many features on it we'll jump into the service books now lots of book there's even an off-road driving manual i love how toyota does that all right originally owned by a human which we like to see all right the car's got the 10,000, the 20 the 30 the 40 50, the 60, the 70, the 80, the 90, and the 106 that we've done. So car is full service history as well. Oh, again, I forgot something. The video was going on a little bit and we forgot something. In here, one of the best things this car absolutely can have. On the Kakadu, you get a fair few options here. You can turn the height control and suspension off. I don't know why you would, but just leave it on. You've got traction control off which is going to disable itself anyway when you put it in four low, so that's okay. Um, here we've got height control, so we can, um, I'll just do that, we can actually go and we'll raise the, raise the height of the car. As you can see up here, you have to move Mr. Lynn, sorry about that. It's currently raising, an air compressor is currently lifting our suspension up, and you gain quite a bit of height, good for the off-road trip if you need to. Back down here, you will notice there's a button that says Sport, Nothing, and then Comfort. Now, as I mentioned at the rear suspension, very briefly, this car is fitted with the KDSS suspension system. Now, because I'm driving on the roads between here and home, I leave it on Sport, which basically if you bought a normal Prado GXL, you'd be in the middle one, sort of in the middle of between Sport and Comfort. You click it into Sport, what it does is the rear suspension, it gets a bit technical, but the rear suspension sway bars get stiffened up and held in place harder, which cuts down on the body roll. Really, really noticeable on back twisty roads. And then you can go Comfort, which will actually disconnect the sway bars a lot looser, allowing you to a lot more body roll especially useful off-road to allow the car to flex over the dirt roads a really noticeable feature while driving the car actually and gives it so much more capability when mentioning with other four-wheel drive systems on this vehicle thank you for watching this video walk around tour of our toyota prado kakadu as you've seen brilliant condition outside great condition tires stunning condition inside full service history and every option under the sun the best reversing camera great headlights the uh, obviously adjustable suspension for height and stiffness this car is set up to go on that big long tour with you and your family to be very quick for this vehicle give us a call 9907 0555 and thank you for watching